I was scared it would happen again. I knew he had his defibrillator in and you trust that it works. They hadn't tested it. Um, and of course the doctors and nurses are very um, blasé because they deal with this all the time, but it's not their family. So for them to say, yep, it'll be fine. If he needs it, it'll go off. And nobody really had told me what it would be like if it would go off. Um, to actually see it physically in Gregor's chest was quite, um, you know, it's quite impacting because it's quite a, a large device. So th he went through a little bit where he was sore from his operation. Uh, and then, of course, he was very protected. He didn't want to do an awful lot in case he dislodged it. What would happen if that, well, it's not going to fall out, but there's lots of questions. There was a lot of lifestyle issues where Gregor couldn't drive. Um, so again, the onus on driving fell on me. So we had to have quite a change of um, position in family. Gregor would have done a lot with the kids' sports. And again, he was very unwell when he first came back. He was very sore, he found it difficult to, he was very breathless. Um, he, it was difficult for him to even climb the stairs. So he was physically recovering. Um, yet he was mentally trying to get back to being the man that he was before and then quite quickly realising things had changed and things were going to change, we were going on a different course of our life, you know. He'd always have a problem with his heart um, and we had to factor that in. Um, could it happen again? What happens if it did happen and I wasn't around? Or what happens if it happened and the children were there? So there's a lot of issues that you've got to... Um, really start to think about very carefully. Our own um, life insurance, for example, changed. Um, we wanted to try and go on holiday. We had to then, Gregor going on holiday with a defibrillator, that was different for us. For the first time he had to pay a huge amount for travel insurance, that was new for us. Um, Gregor's work changed, so his position in the workplace changed. So he had a lot of loss, although it, he was still physically the same Gregor. Um, so all of those were very challenging times. It took a lot of talking. It took a lot of tears. Um, we cried a lot. One of the big things that we really wanted to do was promote awareness about the importance of resusc learning resuscitation and also defibrillation because we are passionate that that's what has enabled our family to be intact. So we had a really big ball black tie event, which was probably a really good thing because it meant we had something to focus on. And that was in the September. And after the September, I think I physically crumbled. Um, and I started to notice that my hair was falling out. Um, and really quite big clumps at the back. Um, Physically, I had everything going wrong. You know, I um, had frozen shoulders. I had, you know, just physically was a complete and utter emotional wreck. And I also realised that I was still really anxious. Um, I would lie in bed at night shaking. And I kind of had thought for a while, gosh, there's something seriously wrong with me. Went through this whole emotional of well, you know, I can't be ill because if I'm ill, who's going to look after the children? It was a terrible sort of pressure that I knew that Gregor was still not physically able to do an awful lot of things. Um, and yet I knew myself that I was going through quite a hard time of, I wouldn't say depression, but just re anxiety. I think it was really, um, I did go and speak to people. I went and spoke to the GP, um, but it took me a good nine, ten months to physically, I think, recover from witnessing Gregor having his arrest to starting to feel more like myself, more able to cope again as a person. Um, and, you know, and f f for the physical symptoms to recover, for my hair to start to grow back in, for me to be able to go and do physical activities again and to be, feel less anxious. I was really was quite... Um, an emotional wreck and I think the kids would quite often say oh mum's crying again and I would just but it would be it's something really quite silly and trivial I knew I, I didn't I knew I wasn't depressed but I definitely had um, anxiety and probably 
looking back now, I probably had a post-traumatic stress um, as well. Um, but as I say now, I'm physically an awful lot better and I can recognise those signs as well now.